Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Ben from One Cast Fishing. Welcome back here to another episode. As you can see, I'm sitting here in the cockpit. I'm sitting behind two Hummingbird Helix 10s. I've got a Hummingbird Helix 7 up front. If you see my live scope video, then you, then you know I run a Garmin as well. I used to run a Garmin on the dash. And then uh, a while ago, I used to have a Lowrance up front too. So I've used all the major manufacturers. The only one I haven't used really is, is Raymarine. And as we know, sonars are a great piece of technology. They're a tool that helps us eliminate bad water, find structure we wouldn't know was there, and find out exactly where the fish are located. But just seeing something on your screen doesn't mean the fish or that piece of structure is right below the boat. You have to keep in mind that sonars are simply a 2D representation. It's a 2D picture on your screen here of a 3D environment. And it's not really a representation, it's more of an interpretation of how the transducer uses radio waves and that software is in using that to go on your screen there. So just because something shows up on your screen doesn't mean it's directly below the boat, even if you're using traditional or downscan technology. So today we're starting a, a series here on sonars and it's gonna be more than just going into, cause you can watch a lot of videos of, hey, adjust your settings here, adjust your sensitivity, you know, look in the dark edges, you know, how to read the sonars. There's a lot of videos on that and maybe we'll get to that in the future, but what this series is really gonna be, do um, not donated to, but really gonna be focused on is understanding the technology and the science behind it. Because if you understand how those radio waves are interpreted, it can make you be more precise on exactly where that, uh, that piece of structure that fish is uh, in the water column when you see it on your screen. So that's what we're going to uh, start today's a series. Today's about the basics of how sonars work. Then we're going to go on the traditional down scan, side scan. We'll talk about chirp and, and probably a lot of other topics over the next several weeks. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. So after you watch this episode, when the next one comes out, you can watch it as well. And with that, I'm going to shift over here and we're going to get started and talk about the basics of sonar. Hey folks, as you can see, I got repositioned here. I'm out of the wind. I'm trying to make this audio as best as I can. So obviously I'm sitting here in my boat. I got my Ultrix trying to keep me in place. But again, today's video is about the basics of sonar. And what I mean by that is all sonars, whether it's your down imaging, your side imaging, your traditional sonar, your live scope, Hummerbird 360, they all operate fundamentally the same way. You know, I've got a transducer here. This transducer is off my Helix 7 up front. Um, I don't use that one for imaging, I just use it for mapping. So I, I literally grabbed this out of the box and you can see the plastic still on there. But again, all sonars operate relatively the same way or fundamentally the same way. And what's gonna happen is this transducer is gonna ping a signal. It's gonna send a radio wave from this transducer through the water column. That could be to the side of its side imaging, down to the side of its down imaging, more of a cone shape if it's a traditional sonar. And we'll talk more in detail about these as we talk about traditional sonar down scan, side scan in future videos. But they all operate the same way. They are sending a radio wave from this transducer. Now this radio wave is able to travel through the water. It's extremely low frequency when you compare it to like our cell phone radio waves or Wi-Fi. But this transducer, it's gonna wait for that signal to return to it. That's because as that radio wave penetrates through the water, when it hits something that's much more dense, a part of that signal is gonna reflect back to the transducer. And based upon the intensity of that signal is, is how the sonar and really the software creates the image you see on screen. When I talk about the intensity of the signal, let's think about mud bottoms. They're extremely soft and, and we know on our sonars they, they look much more dark compared to hard bottoms or rocks. That's because this radio wave penetrates through the water and as it hits the mud bottom, some of that radio wave is going to continue to penetrate further through, the, through that substance only a portion of that radio wave will return to the transducer. Trees are a little more dense than, than a mud bottom, so they're gonna be, um, you're gonna have a little stronger intensity. And of course, rocks, right? Very little of that radio wave is gonna penetrate through the rock, and most of that's gonna return back to the transducer. Uh, it's gonna have a much stronger echo. And that's why our hard and rock bottoms on our down imaging and side imaging show up much more bright on screen. Uh, our mud bottoms are gonna be dark, and then trees can be somewhere in between. But again, is the intensity of the radio wave that returns back to the trans this transducer here is what helps the software interpret or interpret 
how strong or how hard that bottom is. The other thing with that radio wave is that your software interprets how long that radio wave, um, bef as it was sent out, how long it takes for that radio wave to return. It does the math for you, so that's how you get your depth. So an object that hits, you know, you know, you go to the lake bottom, you're 30 feet deep, it knows the math, okay, I sent this signal back out, it returns to me this soon, at this intensity, it does the math for you and you can understand the depth with it. So that's how that works. Hey, so a, a couple more things I wanna talk about here before we wrap up this video. And that is all sonars, I shouldn't say all, majority of sonars, so you're for your traditional, your, your down scan, your side, side scan technology, they work best when you travel between three to five miles per hour moving forward. Now you can adjust the ping speed and there's some ways you can hack it, especially with traditional sonar, where you could be uh, moving a lot slower or sitting still and, and get an image. But the best way to demonstrate this is, if you've ever been out in the water and you've been stationary on top of an object, a school of fish, a rock pile, you'll see a lot of straight lines across your screen. That's because the way the sonar works, it's waiting for that signal to come out of the transducer here and that transducer is moving and it's waiting for that signal to come back in. Again, that's how fish arches are created. That's how it understands kind of the shape of the object on, on down imaging and the intensity. So if you're just sitting flat still on a calm day and you're not moving, you're not idling along, you're not gonna get as, as clear a picture on any type of sonar technology. The exception I think is obviously your, maybe your Hummingbird 360, your live scope, certainly you can be sitting still because the way that technology works in your live site. But that's something to keep in mind. If you're using you know, your, our traditional or, or basic sonar, um, what we've had for years, then it's best to be idling along three to five miles per hour. So the last thing for this video is, it's really a plug for future videos. Um, I, I think I mentioned it. The, whether you're using side imaging, down imaging, or, or traditional sonar, the way this transducer emits signals is at a different angle, at a different frequency, and that's gonna impact what you see on screen. And not only impact what you see on screen, it impacts how you have to interpret where that object is in the water column. Because again, just because you see something on that screen, it's a interpretation. That object may not be below the boat. It could be 30, 40, 50, 60 feet away, depending on what te technology you're using. It could be left or right of the boat, in front or behind the boat. And that doesn't mean only on side imaging. The same thing applies for traditional or, or down imaging. It depends on your depth and your manufacturer and beam moment. And again, we'll, we'll talk about these in future videos, but that's a key to understanding that is, is unhacking the technology to become a better fisherman. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Again, this is all about the basics of sonar or really how the radio waves work and how, and how that is interpreted on screen there. So um, with that said, Make sure you subscribe again, hit the notification button because next week we're going to talk about traditional sonar. So with that, I'm out of here. Remember, our lunker's one cast away.